Good morning to one and all present here. My name is Ishan Singh and I'm a second year student to the session by Manu Patra on Will, Drafting, Execution and Everything in Between. I hope this session will be a fruitful one for all of you and all of your queries and doubts will be solved in this session. Now, for the smoother conduct of this session, I would like to request everyone, please keep their mics on mute. And if anyone has any doubts or queries, they may feel free to put those in the chat box and our resource person get back to you once the initial questions have been finished. Now, I would like to introduce our speaker for this session, Ms. Samreen Hussain, who is an assistant professor at National Law University, Lucknow. She has a teaching experience of more than 10 years and she has various publications in the international as well as national journal. She has been teaching subjects varying from criminal law to family law for the past 10 years and she has a base, uh, she has an interest in family law, family jurisprudence and human rights. She has also been part of Legal Aid Committee at National Law University Lucknow, and she has been taking various sessions and seminars on protection of women from sexual harassment at workplace. Now, I'll move ahead to introduce our uh, moderator for this session, Ms. Urvashi, who is a legal editor and the outreach coordinator at Manupar. Over to you, Ms. Urvashi. Thank you, Ishan. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. So this session will be in a Q&A form. These questions have been received through the Google forms that you all filled. And there were a lot of questions. So we have tried to shortlist them and try to cover as many topics as possible when it comes to family law. So Samreen, should we begin? I guess there is some lag. Samreen, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I just okay. want to share the PPT. Okay, sure, please. Can everybody see the PPT? I can. <laughs> I hope it's visible to everyone. Yes, people have replied in the chat. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, let's start then. Okay, so our first question is, uh, it couldn't be a better question to start the session that what are wills? And uh, before we understand, begin to understand how to draft, how to execute, we need to understand what exactly is a will and then how is it different from what you call a codicil? So can you please uh, elaborate on this? So, so firstly, uh, in a layman language, if we don't talk about uh, what the uh, Indian Succession Act say or what uh, Hindu law says, will is simply a wish of a person, you know, my, my wish that what should happen to my property, who should get my property in event of the person's demise. Anyway, uh, because in general, if a will is not made, then the property is governed by the succession. Whether if you are a Hindu, it will be governed by Hindu Succession Act 1956. Uh, if you are a Christian uh, Christian or a Parsi, it will be governed by the Indian Succession Act 1925. If you are a Muslim, it will be governed by the Sharat Application Act 1937. So if you don't want your property to go in the state, which we refer when there is no testament, or no testament means no will, then it's better that you make a will. Why we should make a will? It's easier for our friends and family to actually know, uh, or we don't want some stranger coming into the family. For example, I can give you a very interesting example that under Hindu law, if a person dies leaving behind a son's widow and an ailing father, the entire property goes to the son's widow and not to his own father or her own father. So that is something which nobody wants. We do want our parents to have a certain share in our property. So in that regard, will actually help. Similarly, there are a few more situations. Uh, for both males and females in which our property might go to people we don't want to, uh, for example, some strangers, for example, a woman, if she dies a widow and she has no children, in that scenario, her entire property will go to her in-laws, leaving her own parents, her siblings, siblings, children, all those people. So in that regard, will become very, you know, it become not just essential, it's also a good tool to actually tell people what do you want. A will just not only contain your property, but also your last wishes too, to an extent. And everybody wants to know that what was the last wish. Every Hindi movie, Akhri Khwahish. That's the will is your Akhri Khwahish. 
Now, there is one more financial benefit also. In inheritance, we have something called as inheritance tax on the property which is levied, which is quite huge, which is not true for will. So in will, without any stamp duty, you can register the will. And again, we'll come to that addition part later on, but then actually it saves you financially also. So it's just not that it will help you uh, to, you know, that the, the person you want the property to will go, but also help you financially. Your loved one will not have to be burdened by unnecessary inheritance tax because it's a lot of amount. Uh, you know, for example, let's take it. If you have a property of around 10 lakhs, then approximately 10% or sometimes 15%, depending upon the state a person is. So it varies from 7% to 18% depending upon the person, uh, state a person lives in, from Andhra Pradesh to Uttar Pradesh to Kerala. So it depends upon the uh, part of country you are in and then the type of uh, inherent tax it has been levied upon. So that is the first thing why we should have a will. Now let's go into a little bit of a technical or a legal language as we say, uh, that what exactly is a will. Will has been defined under section 2 H of our Indian Succession Act and it's basically a legal declaration and it, uh, it's a kind of an instrument uh, which says that what should happen to the person's property after it's death. So will comes into effect only after a person dies. Will is never open. So that is why the effect of will is that it will comes once the person's death is there. So then a will is open. Another fact that will is actually of two kinds, very interesting, privileged and unprivileged. So what are these? Privileged will means uh, that will which have been made by, uh, for example, army men, air force or your navy. Because at that point, or because they can be oral wills too. Privileged wills can be oral wills too. Because there might be a situation when there is an army officer, he's on the border and engaged in warfare, he's dying. Now, what to do? At that point of a despite being in privileged will, he can make an oral will. And privileged will be like mortal like you and me, which means that it has to be in a proper written form. It is not something which has to be there, you know, which is which cannot be on oral will. So written wills are actually unprivileged wills to a layman, and privileged wills are the wills which are oral will. Now, uh, you know, it's, you know, we have a lot of hesitation that how to will to be made or exactly how difficult will to make. No, you can just take our paper out, write it down. You just need to know the language. Here, it's not also about English language. Your will can easily be written in any of the languages. For example, if you are well versed with Hindi, Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, Urdu, uh, Malayalam, Punjabi, any language it can be written in any language and it does not every time requires an assistance of a legal professional so even if you don't know a lawyer and you want to write a will you definitely can write just have you just need to gather your thoughts just need to know that what exactly you want to write in that will and just write it down and just make sure that it is coherent the most important thing is coherent so you're not supposed to write it in a very good english and using all those colloquial and the languages no not required you just need to know the language, know the grammar of that language, that it is understood easily. And these will, which are being written by hand, are referred to as holographs. They are holographs and they're completely valid will. So again, we all know that for a will to be valid, there are two, two three essentials need to be fulfilled. The two, three essentials are the first thing is that every will need to be a signed will. And signed here means in two senses. It can be a thumb impression also, a signature also, or you can ask someone on your behalf to sign, but that also should be in front of you. So that means it needs to be signed. There should be a certain mark that I have written this will, written in a sense that, for example, someone who is illiterate, someone who doesn't know how to read and write, or if you're not comfortable that I could write a very good will and you ask a lawyer or a friend to write it, you should be aware about the content of the will. And after being aware about the content of the will, you have signed the will. Signing is very important. It has been held in plethora of cases that an unsigned will is null and void. An unsigned will is null and void. It has no uh, validity. It has no executionary power per se. Second most important thing is that every will need to be attested by two witnesses. Every will need to be attested by two witnesses. Now, these two witnesses can attest at the same time or at different time also. 
the time is not important. So, for example, he calls one witness first and says, see, I have written this will. This is my signature. You also please sign. What are the witness attesting to? Remember that. Witness are not attesting to uh, that uh, this is this, this will is uh, the, uh, the content of the will. What the witness are attesting to that when this person was making the will, he was of sane mind. I have seen him making the will and this is his signature. That is what he's attesting for. He is not attesting as regard to the content of the will. He might not even be aware about the content of the will. He should not, you know, there's no uh, the uh, possibility or a, or a uh, kind of an encumbrance on the uh, the testator, the will maker, to actually uh, make them aware about that. They just need to be aware that, okay, I am, I, Sumrinu Sen, being of a sane mind, adult, is making this particular will. And, you know, you, you be that, that witness. You be that witness. So again, two witnesses, both the signature are very, very important. Without the signatures, without the signature of the, uh, the will maker, the witness, the will will cannot be executed. It will not be regarded as a valid will. Now, uh, that's what has been you know, in the entire this. This is what uh, you know, see in, in this also, uh, that uh, whenever we write a will, uh, the most important, what the courts have done actually, that they want to give uh, more importance to the intention of the uh, will maker, also referred to as testator. So what does that to mean by the... Sorry to disturb you in between. Can we please uh, put the PPT on the slideshow mode so that it is more visible oh. to the people? Okay, nice. just, just give me one sec. Bottom right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not coming actually. Is it now? Yes, it's great. Thank you so much. So another principle, as I was discussing, was before that in the state that there is always a construction by the court in favor of whatever the testator wanted to say. So they don't want that you know, because of mild uh, differences or, you know, for example, a lot of time, I, there, there's something of principles of interpretation in our uh, legal uh, world. For example, if I ask someone, please bring me an apple. Now, if somebody is not aware about the context in which I'm seeking, he can bring me a fruit, but actually I might be asking for my iPad. So this is what we refer to the importance of context. That, you know, I and I, the person will come with, okay, here's your I, uh, apple. I didn't ask for that. So again, that is what we refer to as construction. I might be very clear that I wanted an apple, bhai. What are you bringing me in a, in a fruit? Because apples also food. So in this regard, that is what the courts are saying, that we want to give maximum value to the intention of the legislature. And we make sure, we want to make sure that whatever the testator wanted should actually be done. So we, we make every, maybe, you know, you, the will should be read as whole, not in isolation. The will, every point should be read in context that what exactly the uh, this particular testator wanted. And this has been again held by Supreme Court in number of cases. I will, I have quoted one of the cases. This is the latest judgment, 2011, the Ganabal Ammal versus T. Raju Ayya, where the courts are saying that the cardinal principle or the cardinal maxim is observed is that the intention is primarily gathered from the language of the document. So, and the language can be anything. The language have to be taken in context with the context. So you're reading a will of a person. So you need to understand the minds of that particular person. Now, uh, this is actually the sections, what I've already said, that under section 63, it is very clearly provided that every will need to be signed. That is why whenever there is a question of oral wills, whether oral wills are valid or not, oral wills in India cannot be valid. The reason being because we have said that every document, and this is provided under section 63 as well as section 65 of the Indian Succession Act 19, uh, 1925. So it very clearly says that you need to affix, assign a signature by yourself or by some other person. So in oral wills, it is not possible to do that. Secondly, when, when, when you're uh, you know, affixing that signature, that sign, the thumbprint or anything, it needs to be further be attested by two more witnesses. Again, that is again difficult with regard to oral wills. 
So therefore, it has been a general understanding that because of the uncertainty of the oral wills, because of the unusual style of the oral wills, they are generally not valid. Interestingly, oral wills are not valid for Hindus, Buddhist, Sikh, Parsis and Christians, but oral wills are valid for Muslims. The reason being because the Muslims are not per se governed by Indian Succession Act, but Sharat Application Act. And therefore, and under Sharia, it is allowed to have an oral will. So it is like that in uh, Hindu law, if it for Hindus, Buddhists, Sikhs, Parsis, Christians, the will need to be written unless and until it's a privileged will. But for Muslims, it can be oral will. But again, it's very difficult to prove oral will. There is another important that if a person has given an oral will and if he lives for another one month after that, for example, on 26th uh, February, somebody made an oral will. And by on 27th March also, he was alive. Then it will be, the will become actually null and void. With regard to oral will also, it's difficulty to prove. So uh, with regard to under Indian Succession Act, oral wills cannot be given validity. Though the courts in few cases and in few states in executing circumstances where a person is on the lying, dying on the lying, uh, lying on the uh, on the dying bed and he's dying and things like that, the circumstances seeing that they have given a uh, validity to oral wills, but it is very few and it's a very unique feature and generally not accepted. The reason is again the same because of the Indian Succession Act. Now, will always need to be dated. Why the will need to be dated? Because it should prove that it is your last testament. It's though there is nowhere as such provided under the Indian uh, Evidence Act that need to be dated. But the courts with the later have propounded uh, that dating is very important because it acts, it actually gives two things. First thing that this is the last will. And secondly, that you know, with regard to the state of mind of a person. So, for example, on uh, 26 January 2021, somebody executed a will. On 26th November 2021, he met with an accident where he suffers a paralytic attack to his left side, implying that the brain stopped working. So, he was not in a fit mental condition. And then on uh, December 2022, he died. The will was made in January 2021. He had a paralytic attack on November 2021. That means we can say that at the time of making of his will, he was of sound mind. So then it actually helps in the validity of the will also. That is why will needs to be dated properly. The other the testators need to affix a date and at what date they have made this particular will. As we have discussed already, the oral wills does not have that kind of validity. The Delhi High Court, as recent as uh, 2007, in the case of Sunita Shivdasani versus Gita Gidwani, has held that we cannot give primacy to the oral wills. The reason being that they cannot fulfill the conditions provided under section from section 63 to section 65 of the Indian Succession Act. Now, I've already used this term, but a person who creates a will is known as testator. The person whom, whose favor will is uh, created is basically beneficiary or legatee. It can also be an executor, though executor is someone different. Executor is a person who execute, execute the will. So it might be possible that you make beneficiary as an executor also, or you make certain other person as executor. The last is the property which have been disposed by will is called as the subject matter of will. Now, for a testator, that is very important. That's what, what we're discussing. It has clear been provided under section 63, or uh, sorry, section 59 of the uh, this Indian Succession Act, that for a person uh, to write a valid will, these essentially should that means he should be sane. He should not be suffering from any kind of mental defect. He should attain the age of 18 years in accordance with the Indian Majority Act. This will should be accordance with its free will. That means it should not be forced, coerced, misrepresented. For example, someone is an illiterate and he asks you to write a will. And here you write, you, you, you yourself include yourself. Instead of writing the will, you yourself in, include yourself and exclude all his heirs. That is again misrepresentation. It's a basically a fraud. So it should be of free will. There should not be a gun to my head and someone asks me, okay, Write your entire property in my name. Again, it will not be a 
valid will. The person should be the owner of the movable and immovable property. Obviously, I can will only my property, not someone else's property. Uh, ordinarily and uh, insane person, if he has been uh, what we regard as uh, the intervals, for example, a person might suffer from schizophrenia, but schizophrenia is such that he have that uh, uh, those hallucinations, uh, uh, those conditions are at regular intervals. So it might be possible for that a week he's sane, a uh, week he understands things, another week he doesn't. So if he make that will in that week, which is supposed to be sane week, the will is valid, otherwise not. Any will made in the state of unsoundness or incompetency also referred to age. So any will made by a minor or kind of an illness where you are not in your senses, you suffer from uh, uh, you know, mental, uh, you know, you're mentally incapacitated because of age also. A 90 year old might not understand a lot of things because of the incapacity due to age. So all these incapacity have to be taken into consideration. And then if in that situation a will is made, it is not a valid will. I start moving forward. Uh, okay. Now with regard to capacity of a beneficiary, there you don't don't need to have any capacity. Any person uh, that means an infant, a major, minor, any person can be a devisee or the legatee in a will. It can be a lunatic. It can uh, be a disabled. It can be a corporation. Hindu duty. The only requirement is a juristic person. So in uh, in law we say that there are two kinds of personalities: juristic and non-juristic. Juristic means the person who can sue. In a simple understanding, a common man for a layman to understand, a person who can be sued or can be sued. That means I am a person who can be sued. If I commit a wrong, someone can sue me. Similarly, if a wrong is committed against me, I can also sue. To elaborate it further, if I commit a crime, if I uh, if I steal something, if I commit a dakati, if I murder someone, I can easily be prosecuted for that. Similarly, if someone steals something from me, if somebody defame me, uh, if say if uh, someone uh, 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 tries to take away my property or anything else, right, I can sue that person. So that means I am a juristic person. Similarly, a university, a trust, uh, a corporation, a society, all are juristic person in, in that regard. So any juristic person, non-juristic person can be your non-living things, basically your uh, clouds, trees, all those things, which are your plants, which cannot be, which cannot sue. Another, we should know that, that the idols, idols are actually a juristic person. Hindu deity is a juristic person, has been held in numerous cases. So they can and they can, they can sue also and they can be sued also. The only thing is, the only thing requirement is that the person in whose favor the will has been made should be in existence at the time of testator's death. Not at the time of making of the will, but at the time of testator's death. So I can right now make a will for my grandchildren, though they are not in existence. So for example, I make a will for my grandchildren and my son never marries. In that situation, the will become infructus. That means it is void. There is no value for that will. So that can be a possibility, but what is important is that will for will, the person should be in existence at the time of the death of the testate. Yeah, right now somebody left a question in the chat that can the baby in a womb be a beneficiary? So I hope this answers their question. Yes, he can, he can, he can. All right. So now uh, let's come to the, I think you, you, uh, you need, uh, let's, uh, uh, the question was regarding to what is will, right? So I think that is answered. So let's come to the second question. Then. And we had a lot of uh, initial questions surrounding the wills only that why is it important? Can the signing process and etc. So we'll uh, move forward to the interesting questions that we got that I think you covered this as well that um, what would be the validity of will of a person who after making a will dies within a day or two or a week? It is, it is completely valid. It's completely well. The reason being, in Indian Succession Act, it, there has been no condition per se as to that when a person should make a will. It can be three hours before the death also and it will be a valid will. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on. 
if a will is not signed will it have any validity at all i think we have already discussed answer to this one because it is no of no value okay next question is can beneficiaries of will also be the witnesses uh, that this 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 for the competency of the witness that answers your question uh it is very clearly provided in the section 67 that no it is better see uh, that uh, you should not be a beneficiary as well as a witness because then it is a conflict of interest apart from that while selecting a witness the supreme court recently in the case of uh, uh, c uh, murthy versus c sadaram ambar has given a list of conditions uh, what should be uh, what you regard as a, a competency of a witness so for example a witness should not be for example if you, by your wife or your husband is the beneficiary it is better that you are not the witness you are not the witness similarly as far as possible select someone who is younger than you it because automatically though it's not something as done uh, that he will surpass you but there's a common understanding that a person who is younger in age will live more longer than a person who is of a greater age so for example if you are 70 year old it's better to have witness in the age of 50s so it is chances that they will actually surpass you secondly very importantly if you if a witness dies during the lifetime of the testator then it is necessary that you should ask a new a fresh witness to come forward now the problem comes let's suppose uh, a person made a will uh, in 2017 attested it and everything else after that the person become bedridden the person who was actually his uh, uh, the witness he lost contact or he was he just were not in contact and he died and and he also died without being aware that the person is the my witness had died what will happen the will won't be valid because it is very clear and we are all aware of that that mistake of law is no excuse yeah so that's a mistake so even though we understand that he might not be aware but let's suppose both witnesses and the testator were in the same car and they died instantly in that there will be presumption that the will is valid okay so that we need to understand that too we have to work very i always quote in my class also that we are dealing with family law we are dealing with people we are dealing with emotions so sometime it requires an out of the box thinking though we should refer we should adhere to letter of the uh, you know the letter of the law but then again the letter of the laws are made for the convenience of people now if the state has been given a certain uh, you know it has given a, a made a will now he was not supposed to die that day having the witness along with that person so we should give primacy to his or her wishes in that regard that is one thing another thing is that that in case uh, where we always have this question that if the testator is aged it's infirm or suffering from a physical illness it is always advisable that one witness should be the one witness out of the one witness should be the testator of the doctor of the testator so it's better he can actually give uh, importance to the uh, the the mental capacity the physical capacity of the testator another thing is that that uh, in the law whenever the say under section 67 and 68 of uh, indian evidence act and 65 to 68 of indian succession act also that whenever we require to prove a will it's norm it's a general principle that at least one witness is called you call one witness to actually ask that whether uh, this particular uh, uh, this particular will was made in front of you whether were you aware about the will or not So for these questions, it's general. Uh, the the rule is that that you will call at least one witness. So you can call both also. But and with regard to documentary, for the documentary proof, we all are aware in Indian Indian Evidence Act, which is sixty eight, says that it need to be, uh, you know, for the signatures, an expert testimony had to be taken whenever there is a question. So all these rules of evidence, as with succession, applies to a will also in order to verify the authenticity of the will. okay thank you uh, so related to this only somebody i the, we'll take the questions in the end but this one is related so we can take this right now that what if both the witnesses pass away before the person who's the, before the testator so that this does this make the will in structures right yes it makes makes the will in structures okay thank you so uh, our next question is that if i have received any property through will can it be transferred further yes definitely there is no limitation to that 
if you receive a i i got to know that i have received a certain will on the same date also i can make a will and transfer that to some other person but again oh. i will transfer on the same date but when it come into effect only after my demise yes. so it won't be a same thing it must be like like a transfer of property it won't be like a transfer of property because for example i today i come to know that some of a distant relative has happened in our in hindi movies दूर दराज का रिश्तेदार मर जाता है और आपको बहुत सारी जायदाद दे जाता है तो ऐसा ही कुछ मेरे साथ होता है मुझे आज मिल जाती है और मुझे लगता है कि मैं ऑलरेडी विल बनाने की प्रोसेस में हूँ तो आई ट्राई टू मेक अनदर विल आई एन इंक्लूड दैट प्रॉपर्टी टू बट दैट विल विल बिकम ओनली विल कम इंट ओनली बिकम वैलिड और कम इन टू इफेक्ट ओनली आफ्टर माई जिमाइस नॉट बिफोर दैट and how mandatory is it to register a will is there any validity of a will without registration registration will come to that also but without registration will is completely valid registration in india is only optional it's an optional process so if for somebody is writing a holograph the the hand and will it's completely valid without any without any registration it's not required to register your will registration is just an added advantage because with a registered will uh, it is for example the entire process of will make it sure that it is genuine another important thing is with the with regard to registration what important thing can be there that if it's a registered will then it is in the safe keep of the uh, sub registrar you know the tehsildar and all those people so there is a safe keeping of the will also so apart from that any person can make a will without any registration okay so maybe now we can quickly cover codicil before we move on to our next question because now my questions relate to registration probation etc it will come later so what if what is a codicil a lot of people are confused with regard to will and codicil are same or not no will and codicil are not same basically what happened let's suppose i have written a will and i have registered the will now i want to add something to it or i want to delete something from it or i want to add more property to it what should i do i should again make a will and then get register register again again the tedious process because obviously it's a government process it's a tedious process so instead of that what i can do i can write a codicil codicil is basically and uh, a, a a kind of a addendum added to the will it includes the any kind of alterations made in the will if i want to write an explanation for example i have an only son and i have not included him in the will so that will be an important question why your son is not included so i may write in that codicil the reason for not including of my will is that my son is a complete loafer and i don't want him to give any property because he will waste my property so that can be an explanation or for example i acquire more property so i can write in the codicil that this property is actually not for according to will but according to the test uh, the inti test succession so any kind of thing has to be added another the, the rules of codicil and will are same so if i am writing a codicil again it need my signature it need to be attested by the witnesses and again if i have registered my previous will this codicil also need to be registered if i don't register it then it won't be regarded as a valid codicil okay thank you okay again the, this i like to review that subject matter because we have uh, always heard that there are two kinds of property self acquired and ancestral property so can we make will of both the properties or one property we can make a property uh, we can make will of all the property when we are talking about ancestral property in ancestral property we have an interest we don't know that what exactly will be our share until and unless there is a partition so we can make the will of that particular interest also after 1956 amendment and also after 2005 amendment to the hindu succession act 1956 any person male or female can make a will of both their self acquired property implying that property which i earned through my job through any kind of a, a prize scholarship my skills a lottery any which way uh, inheritance gift or the ancestral property which belongs to my ancestor all these property are covered in the definition of testament so i can give any property movable immovable from jewelry to houses uh, from assets anything can be given without an without any problem uh, this is actually the question with regard to registration so yes what we don't require to register will according to registration act 1908 will are not included in registration 
So no, there is not a requirement to register your will. It's purely operational. How a will, now if you want to know, I can tell you how a will to be registered. For a will to be registered, what is required is that you along with certain documents and what are the documents? The copy of the will, one photo ID and one residential proof. These two, three documents are to be needed. You need to go to the sub tehsildar office. After reaching the sub tehsildar office, along with two witnesses and their Aadhaar cards, basically photo IDs need to be there. And after that, uh, there is a, a registration form which need to be filled. And then you in, in front of the sub tehsildar, you will be signed. In, but need to be noted that sub tehsildar is only saying that you are registering the will. He or he is not providing the validity to the will. Sub-sales-sales-dar sir, problem hai. For example, jab will aap register hi, jab aap will likh rahe te, uspe sign karwana bhul gaya kisi ka. Ya aap apna khud ka sign alag aa raha hai. Register karne koi aur gaya hai, sign kisi aur ka hai. Wo sari conditions ke liye, wo valid nahi karta. That is why, even if a will is registered, it does not make it an authentic will. It can still be challenged. Every will can be challenged despite being registered because we can say there can be fraud. For example, are you make you 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 know they're very easy to use coercion. It's fraudulent means. You say okay, fine. We are going to do a certain work. See, for example, for an illiterate, he is not aware that what exactly happens up there in the office. Oh, हम सिर्फ थोड़ा सा काम करने जा रहे हैं बस यहाँ साइन करना है आपको और कुछ नहीं है. But basically, you are registering his will. That's a fraud, a misrepresentation. People are not generally uh, aware about laws. So any will can be challenged. Now the question is, when we say that any will can be challenged, how? Suspicious circumstances. There has been a case of uh, uh, Bharpur Singh versus Shamshir Singh, 2009 Supreme Court, where the court said that we have to look at the shrouding circumstances. Every will has been made in certain conditions. With the context of the will, you can understand. Simply person writing, I so and so give my entire property to X and leaving behind all the heirs, his own son and daughter, wife. This appears to be not correct. This appears to be a little, uh, you know, uh, cruel to the power, cruel to the heirs all. So why? So if you are doing something like that, he must have been, for example, you add a code to it that my family is worthless. I don't want to leave anything to them. You know, you add something to of that. So the evidence also plays a very important role in that. And evidence, what kind of evidence can be, prove, uh, you know, provided is very different. So if it's a documentary proof, the signature, expert testimony with regard to the, for example, the person was not actually of a sound mind. The person was suffering from uh, uh, certain mental defects. For example, the recent judgment of 2021 of uh, uh, Murthy versus C. Sabrahmal. In that case, the, the, the will came after 15 years. A uh, very interesting case. That's why I'm bringing this case. In this case, the person died in 1978. After 15 years of that, uh, his death, his daughters wanted to partition his property. Uh, because to, uh, after this, to partition his property and get their share. When they apply for partition of the property, the daughter-in-law, the daughter-in-law uh, submitted a will for a uh, submitted a will saying that he has given his entire property to me and his son. Because now my husband is also dead, so the entire property belongs to me. There were few questions. A very interesting question, for example, the women who were saying that the father-in-law has vested this entire property in me, his son was an advocate. Why wasn't he made aware about? Why wasn't the will be registered? Again, the son, if by 15 years, will was never reopened, never, never came into the, you know, light, saw the light of the day. It was only after when the daughter asked for their share in the property, a certainly a will came into existence. So these kind of things. Another important, before his demise, this person suffered from uh, paralytic attack. So this female was taking, though the daughter-in-law was taking care of him, but he suffered. Who, interestingly, who was the witness? The witness was the daughter-in-law's uncle. So all these questions, the court need to understand uh, that whether it was possible that it might be a forged will. So in this case, was it it's a forged will? Why weren't you interesting in getting this will to came into effect 15 years? Why wait for 15 years? Let your husband die, saying that my husband was unaware about the will. So all these are suspicious. If even if you are leaving your children behind, you tell them, I will not give anything in my property with you if you don't adhere to my or abide to my situation. So that is, you know, so all these things, these kind of evidences, 
now the problem comes if the will has been registered it is 90% of time if that will has been registered it is probated uncontested that means registration to an extent give validity to the will but then again uh, in the case of uh, this uh, in the case of uh, in a judgment of uh, bombay high court uh, i just need to remember the case uh, yeah chelia versus elon mason it's a 1990 judgment of bombay high court where the court is saying that even if a will is registered then also it doesn't prove that it's a valid will and that is the only case that i could actually find where registered will was regarded as invalid otherwise in general you know that is the reason why we are doing the registration to make to add more evidence to it to add more authenticity to it. okay so uh, basic questions of uh, the, which i had about the registration and all are answered now so uh, is there any uh, stamp duty if i register a will no there is no stamp duty there is no stamp registration stamp. is completely free there is a small registration fees to be given that is uh, some time in few state i know about the up it's actually one person of the property okay other state i am not aware about okay and we have discussed that yes a legally registered will can be challenged in the court so that answers the next question i had now can you tell us something about the execution of wills how a will has to be executed the process of execution okay so when the moment a person dies if uh, people are aware about it that you know this person has written a will in that situation uh, the will can have a lot of things actually i already told you it can be a single piece of paper guarding your wishes but in general if you are writing a will you should take care that this added an executor who is an executor executor is a person who will actually try an executor can be any person it can be any person so executor can be a person who is a beneficiary also that means i inherit from it also and i am the executor also it can be a third person also who get nothing from the will but still executing the will that means he is kind of a trustee on which the property has been vested that for the for the proper disposal of the thing for the first thing required is the probate probate implying that now you want there is no problem in the will you take a permission from the court a simple understanding you take a permission of the court that this is a will written by my ancestor my parent my friend my anyone and now i want this will to be executed so you get a probate from the courts and after getting a probate the will becomes in it comes in effect and the property is divided now the question comes uh, this probate is actually a proof of genuineness and a conclusive evidence that this is the original will but interestingly every will does not require a probate every time a probate is not required yeah that is what i wanted to know that is it mandatory to probate a will no it is not actually mandatory to probate a will the reason being probate is basically for those will which are registered for a registered will probate is mandatory okay if a will is registered it need to be probated otherwise and for that after probate there will be a letter of administration issued by the district court uh, the simple thing is you file you go you get a vakala you file a vakalat nama you get a vakalat nama after getting a vakalat nama the court you the court hears the evidences the court asks if there is any anyone who actually says that i don't want this to be done for example if there is a, any contradiction or someone say no the same way like in a marriage kisi ko koi aapatti to nahi hai similar kind of thing that if someone has uh, any problems with the will if there is no problem the court grants the probate and the letter of administration and after that the property is divided but for example nobody goes to the court uh, a person knew that the father has written a will they get out the will it has, has been provided that you know these these people should be given a will it will get be done no probate a probate is not required in every circumstances probate is mandatory under uh, section triple 2 of indian succession act only in cases where the it has been a registered will so if you want you can get a probate under section 219 and 218 of the indian succession act but it is not something which is mandatory because it is will is something which is very personal registration is not mandatory so a lot of post time possible people there is no uh, no one actually raise any objection to the will if no objections are raised then there is no problem to actually the they uh, decide among themselves when objections are raised then probate becomes necessary yes. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on. Uh, I think these were the questions we had about the registration and probation part. Now that you mentioned uh, a few slides back, you mentioned that sometimes the wills can be forged or made fraudulently. So how does one prove that this will was not executed voluntarily and this is a forged will or something like that? So then it, it depends upon the how the like proving of the evidence part, presumption of you know, what we regard as burden of proof. On, or what we uh, said that it's a civil and preponderance of probability. So, for example, I uh, give you an example of a case of uh, this. Uh, uh, let me just, just give me one second. I think I have. Yes, uh, the case of Kamla Menon Kocher in 2014 decided by the Supreme Court. So, in this case, the court said uh, that while deciding the authenticity of the will, you need to understand the circumstances surrounding the will. How, when was the will made? How was the will made? So, for example, they gave, the court is giving example that where a person is bedridden and someone is taking care of that person. And then after a few months, the person dies and the entire property vests in that person who was taking care without okay. anything there. So, it presupposes, you know, the, you know, you have that he has left everyone else and just given the property to the nurse. Why is that? What was the reason behind that? So that means the the the, the condition of I suppose the context. The context become very important. Whether he was asking for an apple of fruit or apple a laptop. So that's how courts want to say that. See the circumstances surrounding it. Do you think it is possible that he was forced? Do you think it was possible that he was under any kind of an influence? From any person so for example if the entire property is vested in one son uh, all other uh, heirs are not being given anything or actually this inherited what might be the reason are there any reasons for that so in that that is the way the court actually say whether it's a fraud so they have multiple tools in regard to that through interviews to documentary evidence to uh, through messages letters you know there have been different kind of evidence has been produced with regard to prove that's a forgery. With regard to forgery, uh, we have the Indian Evidence Act, the expert testimony, the signatures are not the same, signatures are different. So all these are the methods in general which the courts have used. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think the next question which I have, you answered in the beginning, but just, you know, just in case somebody missed it, that if I'm drafting a bill, is it necessary to be an expert in, you know, English and grammar? No, and not at all. In fact, the Act itself say that there is no particular language for drafting a will. In the act itself, it is written that you can write your will in any language you want to. The only thing is coherence. The most important is the coherency of the will. That you should, you know, the, uh, there should be the person reading the will should understand your intention. It should not be unambiguous. I want to do this also, that also. That kind is actually problematic. But if it is coherent, if it is clear, then it's a valid. Well, you don't need to be an expert in grammar. But not expert in grammar does not mean that it should have been some way that a person is unable to understand the context also, unable to understand the words also. So it's better, for example, if you're not well-versed in English, write it in Hindi. If you're not well-versed in Hindi, write it any language you are well-versed in. It's sufficient enough. Okay. Okay. Next question is, uh, kindly elaborate on the legal recognition of digital wills in India. Do we have digital wills in India? Uh, so, so technically no there is we don't recognize digital wills or e wills as called as in india the reason being i told you about section 63 in the starting where you require to sign it and then the witnesses to sign it so for that make it very essential to have it a a pen and paper format again uh, the the signature which is provided under the e will is not recognized in the it act also uh, furthermore as recent as in 2020 this case of sayar kumari versus state and others the very clearly said that though it can say that the will was authentic but will for the will to become mandatory you know the will become in effect it need to be signed by uh, the rules of e-signatures, e-agreement, the reason being because in India, we don't have the concept of e-signatures or digital signatures per se. If I ask you, what is your digital signature? 
how many of in that entire participants have a digital signature also and digital signature does not means that you sign it and then you pd make a pdf scan it and check it no digital signatures have their metadata also so early you know we, like a way we have uh, strokes how a person regard that whether it's a valid signature whether it's your signature or not experts similarly for digital signature also there are metadata introduced for example to touch the veracity though we have seen that in the recent uh, different reports uh, in different uh, lcrs it has been asked to recognize it but still the, this bill was introduced in 2019 it wasn't passed so it'll 2023 no the answer remains no in india digital wills are not valid though there has been especially after covid the type of time we have seen two years the lockdown social distancing and everything it has become a need of an hour and also because of the changing technology but then again we have to adapt to it india till 2020 have in 2023 also haven't recognized it yes okay okay great so uh, the next question is uh, can you tell us something about uh, family deed settlements see family deed settlements in will are two totally different thing family deed settlements happen with regard to under the purview of hindu joint family so when you have a hindu joint family in there there are family agreements or that is called as family settlements they are completely different from will will is one person where family agreement or family settlement means that between the family it has been decided so for example uh, there are few properties now few want to sell it few doesn't want to sell it what should be done so in that regard they reached to a uh, agreement that okay fine those who want to sell it we will give you the money and you just you 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 won't take any share whenever there is a partition so this is what we refer to as family deed or family agreement they are not per se wills okay and can these deeds be challenged uh, later see family deed can be challenged but by only the parties who were part of that will so for example three brothers make a family settlement so only those three brothers can challenge it not their offspring okay okay great okay because the people who are part of an agreement can only challenge the agreement okay uh, my next question is does an adopted daughter of a single parent be termed as class 1 heir or agnate adoptive daughter or son whatever be the scenario they are in in equivalence to a biological child okay so they have the same right as a biological child okay. so they are the class 1 heir so if someone leaves around an adoptive daughter whether unmarried married whatever be the scenario if it's a legal adoption that child is entitled to get everything as if he or she was a biological child okay okay so the last question from my list i will just ask and then we will move on to the chat's question some questions we will take uh, so my the, somebody has written my wife and i have no child can i give my property to a trust or university and in such yes. case who will be uh, the executor see you can appoint an executor as i told you beneficiary can be any person he needs to be a jurisdictive person university is a jurisdictive person a uh, trust is a jurisdictive person so yes definitely you can do that with regard to who can be the executor you can appoint any person as an executor uh, the lawyer who who is you are uh, gone to make this particular will can be your executor a friend can be an executor any person can be so what whoever you wants to okay okay great thank you so much let's take a few questions from the chat now because i have been receiving a lot of questions while we were talking um, so the first question here is can a baby in the womb be to can pets or domestic animals be beneficiary I yes don't... yes they are juristic persons okay okay aren't you suing a labrador who killed a child in hyderabad okay so they can be beneficiaries of wills as well yes they can okay what is the limitation period for taking probate of a will is there a limitation period there is no limitation okay thank you somebody has written hi nowadays in mumbai a father wills his house to his son and also nominates him in the society where they live there are other siblings also the will is registered but not probated 
What is the status? Does the house title go to the son? Yes, it goes to the son. If it's a valid will, signed, attested, it is a valid will. It, he can do that. The okay. siblings can challenge it or knowing that it, it is a fraud or coercion or undue influence. But then again, till the point is challenged, it's a valid. Okay. He can then do there, it. Oh, sorry, sorry, please continue. No, no, I, I've, I've done then there are a couple of questions about the witnesses passing away. So we have discussed all of that. And then um, um, can you please ask the question which was raised related to donating of half wills to general public and the other half to family members? Was there a discussion sometime? How you can do that? It is not a you can do that. You can make, you can, for example, half of your property to a trust and half to your heirs. You can do that. That is again a that's a personal wish. What I want to do with my property. I can okay. give it to five people, 10 people, 20 people, trust, heirs, non heirs, any person. Okay, okay, great. And I think this brings us to one of our last questions. Is it required that all members who have an interest in the property should sign or like should be a signatory to the family settlement? See, family settlement, and again, is a very different thing. It requires another discussion here. Then we have to talk about the joint family property. Okay, then we have yeah. to talk about the individual property. I cannot answer this question in yes or no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then so, you have to have another session on this that we pertains around family arrangements and <laughs> families and the yeah. joint family property. You know, in the joint family, basically. Next question is, when two wills are made in instance for two years, like I make one in 2022 and the one in 2023 will it be correct to say that the second will be valid and the earlier one becomes void automatically yes it's a latter will see you can revoke a will if you have registered a will then you can and registered will can also be re revoked by a but only by written will so for example i made a will and registered it in 2020 or 2018 and in 2023 i made in another will so now the valid will is 2023 despite 2018 being the registered one. So it is possible. Now the proving is that the second will is made by me only. For example, the, the, uh, what has been said in the case of Murthy versus Isabamal, 2021 judgment. Or how to prove the fraudulent nature in the case of Kamla Kochar. Okay, so just uh, we are, you know, on time. But just one last question before we, you know, wrap up this session. That uh, what happened? Where did the question go? That we talked about the witnesses passing away, but what if the executor dies before the testator? Then simply we see executor is not someone who is mandated. In the okay. So his passing away will not invalidate them. Okay, okay, great. Witnesses are mandated. So before we wrap it up, I would like to give a few pointers how to write a will actually. That, that means how to write a will which is actually which cannot be challenged which is a perfect will so the first the first thing to be noticed is when you start writing a will it's a declaration in the beginning and declaration in the beginning means that a testator need to write about himself that means i your name your parents name father or the mother's name the place where you live in and that you are in a sound mind you are under no influence under you know uh, none influence of your free will you are making this will after that, which is very important, is the details of the properties and documents. You have to write that who are you, you know, what kind of properties you have included in a sense that whether you're including all your properties, some of your properties, whether the document to attach regarding that properties, everything has to be listed there. Then the second is regard to ownership. For example, it might be possible that there are a few properties which are your joint owners or you have co-owners. So you have to mention that this particular is a joint ownership property. So I am giving you the joint tenancy right or the co-ownership rights that need to be done. Last is the beneficiary. So if you're writing about beneficiaries and if you know that you are, uh, you know, you are not giving it to few of your heirs, then specify that why not? So if you're saying I am giving this property to A but not B because B has been a bad son or a, a bully or something like that or he has been bring so much, so much of shame to my family. So something or the other in the will to say that why you have not given. So if you have three sons, you are just giving it to two sons and not to the third son, why not? If you're only giving to the daughters, not son, or only to son, not daughters, it's better to write and details of the beneficiary that who are those beneficiaries? What are the relations of yours? The last is importance attestation. Signing yourself 
and then getting reliable witnesses to sign it and tell them that this is my signature who can who can actually uh, you know attest to your mind who can attest to your eligibility and the last is you have to the execution part we already discussed so if you take care into these accounts the will a proper will can be made and without having any problem per se with regard to the later on challenge of it okay okay great thank you so much over to you ishan um i'll be proceeding with the vote of thanks and on behalf of manupatra i'd like to extend our heartfelt thanks to mr amin hussain for gracing us with her presence and sharing her insights today on wills we are also grateful to mr amin for the time and efforts she has put in for this session success Lastly, I would also like to thank the participants for gracing us with their presence. Thank you all. Shan, you are making one mistake calling me Miss Samreen. I have spent a lot of time earning a doctorate. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Samreen. And for you know, for academician, that degree is very important Apologies. because we spend a sweat and blood on that particular degree. <laughs> yes. Apologies. Ma. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Shan. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.